Our scripture this morning is Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. The word of the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you have given us your word. Send now your spirit into this place. Open our hearts and our minds to see what you are speaking to us. And help us to write it down upon our hearts and to live it faithfully each and every day. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I read somewhere once that the Western Church, this is the Church of Europe, the Church of America, Protestants, Lutherans, Roman Catholics, Baptists, Pentecostals, this whole big conglomeration, tend to emphasize the death of Jesus Christ. While the Eastern Church, this is Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, the Orthodox Church, the Coptic Church, the Church of the East, tends to emphasize the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's not like the West denies one or the East denies one or the other. It's just they tend to emphasize one over the other. The West tends to emphasize the crucifixion. The East tends to emphasize the resurrection. And I have to say, when I've read that, I thought, that's pretty true. If I were to ask most of you, what is the gospel, to summarize the gospel, I imagine many of you would say something along these lines. Jesus Christ died for my sins, right? Death, that death part. And it's true. Often when we talk about the gospel, we talk about Christ dying for our sins. And and it certainly is true. That is what he did. And yet it's only half the story. Because in the end, there is no real victory. There is no real salvation without the empty tomb. Someone once told me that the cross and the empty tomb are two sides of the same coin. Both have to happen in order for there to be salvation. Both have to happen in order for us to be saved. We need the emphasis of the East and the West. This past Friday, Good Friday, we observed the death of Jesus Christ. We remembered the cross and the punishment he suffered for our salvation. But the cross is only half the story. The cross is about forgiveness. That is true. On the cross, Jesus Christ took our sins, the sins of the entire world, on himself and paid the price for those sins. And the forgiveness of Jesus Christ is absolute. And it's wonderful and it's beautiful. And it is, means that our sins are no longer held against us. God no longer judges us, but we can finally come before him as his people. The cross is a message of hope. On the cross, we find forgiveness. And yet that still is only half the coin, half the story. 
Because if the cross, if only the cross, we would be forgiven for our sins, yes. But that's it. The world would still have to deal with death. In other words, if only the cross, if Christ died but didn't rise again, yes, there would be forgiveness for us, but death would still be a part of this world, part of the fabric of this world, powerful, and the end of all of our journeys. Yes, we would be forgiven, but the grave would still be our final resting place. But when God plans salvation, He planned more than just forgiveness of sins. He planned to bring life to a people facing sin and death. And that's what we're remembering this morning. It is through the cross that Christ pays the punishment our sins deserve. The cross takes away the punishment, satisfies God's wrath and God's anger over our sins, but it is in the resurrection that Christ defeats death. It's in the resurrection that Christ shows himself more powerful than the grave. And I cannot say that loud enough or strong enough. The resurrection is proof that Christ is stronger than death. Proof that he can defeat death. And in his resurrection, we see for us a promise of new life. For those who believe in Jesus Christ, there is a promise of new life. In the resurrection, we see the ultimate reward for believing in Jesus Christ. New life stronger than the grave. That's what was going on that first Easter morning. On a Sunday morning, almost 2,000 years ago, a group of women came to a tomb that was supposed to have a body in it. And it was empty. And a messenger of the Lord proclaimed to them this wonderful news. You are looking For Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified, he has risen. He's not here. On that first Easter morning, someone who was dead was raised back to life. And in the empty tomb, we see that death could not keep Christ in the grave. He is stronger than death, stronger than sin. And it is in the tomb and the cross, these two parts that we see the complete plan for salvation. In the cross, we find that forgiveness, that deep, deep, wonderful forgiveness of Jesus Christ. And in the tomb, we see the new life possible as forgiven people of God. The empty tomb proclaims where forgiveness ultimately leads us to. And really, the ultimate goal of God's salvation, life. The gospel is all about life. New life where there wasn't life before. A new life stronger than the grave and the sins that will put us there. Easter is about celebrating the new life that Christ brings to all of us. This Lent, we've been asking ourselves, who is Jesus? And we've seen Jesus is a healer. Jesus casts out demons. Jesus brings forgiveness between us and God. Jesus brings the resurrection of the dead. Jesus is the Son of God. We've seen all these things. Today we have this final piece of the puzzle. Jesus is the one who brings us new life. Because that ultimately is what the gospel is about. The gospel, the Bible, the actions of Jesus Christ, the Son of God who became human, all of what we've been looking at for the last how many weeks? Six weeks is really the story of God bringing life back to this world full of death. And while we might like to talk about death and forgiveness, all that death and forgiveness on the cross leads us to the life in Christ. Christianity is about having the hope and the promise of that new life. The gospel we believe in is a message of life. Christ rose from the dead. And he says, there is life for you. And that's the promise we cling to. As Christians, we know that our sins are forgiven. So that one day, whether we die or Christ comes again, on that day of judgment, the dead will be raised and we will stand before our Lord forgiven. And we will live with him for all eternity.
In other words, while there still is death in this world, we have the promises of God that one day everyone who believes will live again. And we have proof that that promise is real because Christ is raised from the dead. And if he can be raised from the dead, then he can raise us from the dead as well. The final destination of all Christians is life. Life with our risen Lord. I was thinking about that this week, and to be honest, it it makes sense that life is really the goal of salvation. In the beginning, God created this world, and he created this world full of life. This world is still full of life. I see that. I'm watching daffodils and tulips pop out from the ground. We're watching leaves bud on the trees. This world is created to be alive, and it is so alive. But it's also full of death. It's full of sin, and it's full of death that sin brings. It's full of war and hate, and full of people who burn and rip down. Full of destruction and chaos and hatred and anger and greed and despair. Brokenness and disconnectedness. It's full of all these things. And it's not the way it's supposed to be. In our hearts, I think we know that all this destruction and death is not the way it's supposed to be. That's probably why we fight death so much. Whether it's with medicine or or that survival instinct. I believe we have that instinct because death is not supposed to be part of this world. God created this world to be full of life, not death. So that when it became full of sin and death, it makes sense that God's ultimate goal of salvation is to bring back life. That's the ultimate goal. A world without death so that his people can experience life. And that is what Christ did 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, Christ entered this world, and he taught his disciples about forgiveness and life. 2,000 years ago, Christ healed the sick to show that he's stronger than the effects of sin. 2,000 years ago, Christ cast out demons to show that he's stronger than the powers of darkness. Christ told his disciples he must die because his death is the only way to find forgiveness. And he raised back to life a little girl to show that death, Death is not stronger than he is. And then Christ, the Son of God, won us salvation when he went to the cross. And on that tree, he carried our burdens, our pains, our sins, and through his death, we are granted forgiveness since the price of our death has, or our sins has been paid. But then Christ raises himself from the grave and he shows that there is life with him. And Christ says, come to me, believe in me, and you will find that same life. This morning, this Easter morning, we celebrate the life that Christ offers to us. We celebrate that Christ rose again, and we proclaim, we speak those beautiful promises. Believe in him one day, so that one day we will also be raised. And we remember that even while we may die, One day we will all live. One day the dead will be raised, and we know this is possible because Christ lives. Today we celebrate the promise of the resurrection of the dead. We celebrate that promise. And I think there's a challenge in this. I think it's hard sometimes to believe in this. I started out this sermon talking about how Western Christians often talk about Christ's death and and forgiveness more than the resurrection. And even right now, as we talk about the resurrection, some of you might be thinking about how weird this is. You might be thinking about how weird the resurrection sounds. That's a challenge for us this morning, to realize that there is a promise, that whoever believes, there is new life waiting for us beyond the grave. And the challenge, there is a challenge in that because it's hard to picture. It's hard to understand and wrap your head around the resurrection. It's hard to think about. I think that's why the Western church so easily summarizes our faith as, as Christ dying for my sins or as forgiveness. Because that's easy to talk about. The resurrection seems more mystical, more like a plot of a movie than anything else. And I imagine, imagine with me for an instant. 
Imagine explaining the resurrection to someone who's never heard about it. Think about what you would say. Personally, when I imagine what I would say, it almost sounds like telling someone a fairy tale. And maybe that's why we often explain our faith in terms of forgiveness, because that is easier to explain. The resurrection seems so distant and so foreign, and in this world, death seems so final. Because we live in a world that sees everything ending in death. Sometimes, as Christians, we get sucked thinking about that, too. We go to funerals. We say goodbye to loved ones. We're sad. We shed tears. We fight death with all of our strength. Look at our passage. Even the women didn't celebrate the resurrection at first. They walked away confused and fearful. They couldn't understand the angel's words that he had risen. The resurrection is so unbelievable, no one understood it at first. The women didn't know what was going on. The disciples at first thought it was nonsense. It isn't just us who have a hard time picturing and understanding the resurrection of the dead. The disciples did too at first. But even if it seems weird and mystical, it's still true. On the first Easter morning, Christ rose from the dead and the world changed. Not a political change, not a geographical change, or a change in the environment. Christ's resurrection changed the very fabric of this world. Instead of this world being a world where death is the end, it became a world where life is finally possible. And I know that's not always what we see. But on that first Easter morning, Christ rose from the dead, and in that act, Christ says, no, death is no longer the final word. He rose again, literally, to bring back life to this world. Christ brings life to where there is death. And that is the greatest gift he offers to us. Believe in him. Believe that he came to forgive sins. And believe that death and funerals are not the end. That there is a gift of life stronger than the death of this world. Believe that one day Christ will come in victory and we will see new life. A life that will never end. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God created this world to be full of life, not death. This was a world that wasn't supposed to feel the touch of death at all. But it did. And Christ was sent to this world to die and through that death we find forgiveness. But then Christ rose And defeated the power of death so that his people may experience their own resurrection. So that his people, we as his people, may one day have life that doesn't end. But we can continue in a world that no longer is full of death and destruction and sin. But we may live in a world full of God's presence. I keep saying this again and again. I know people hear me say this. There is no hope in this world. But may we hope in the promises of God, knowing we are forgiven by the blood of Christ. And may we face death without fear. Because it is just as certain that one day that he will raise us from the dead. He will raise from the dead all who believe in him. Death is not the end for us. We have a future. A future of life in the presence of God to love and to live and to serve him for ages and ages. This is the promises of God. And his promises are real and certain. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we often talk about forgiveness and death. And yet this morning we realize the empty tomb means a life. It is the promise for life for us that extends beyond the grave. Life in your presence, life that doesn't end. A life to enjoy this world and all the wonderfulness in it. And Lord, even while we still face death and sin each day, we also know we have forgiveness and a hope of eternal life. Lord, may we cling to these promises each and every day. May we have that hope. 
May nothing overshadow it. May nothing obscure it. But may we continue to live in the promises of Christ each and every day. We ask this all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's stand and sing, Nearer Still Nearer, number 659. Let's stand and sing. <laughs>